Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining and welcome back to Wall Street Silver. Today, joining us is a very special guest, Chris Vermillion, Chief Market Strategist at thetechnicaltraders.com. Welcome back, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me, Ivan. Always a pleasure. Yeah, it's absolutely always having a, always a great pleasure having you on, uh, Chris. And everyone has been hearing the crisis calls from Janet Yellen. She kept saying that there's an economic catastrophe coming due to the uh, debt ceiling dilemma. Now that the debt ceiling deal is made, how bad is that deal, and how will it affect the economy? What do you think? Yeah, that's that's a that's a loaded question. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm more so from a technical standpoint. So I try not to follow the news. I try not to think how news is going to affect because nobody really knows how investors are going to react on anything, right? Right. So based when I look at the debt ceiling, I look at the chart patterns. I think long term picture here, uh, the markets are still fairly bullish. Uh, we're you know we've been long the market. We're we're up doing very well on some positions on the indexes. But overall, I, I do think we're going to see all this kind of come to an end. As you and I talked about six months ago, I think this year, 2023, we're eventually going to see this complacency rally, this what I call a stage three topping phase come to an end. Mm -hmm. And I think there's going to be a, a bigger delay. I still think we're months out from potential the markets rolling over, selling off. And I think a lot of people will look back and say, oh, it had to do with the debt ceiling uh, you know, it's always hindsight 2020. We don't know when the peak is. We don't know what is going to be the cause of it. But I don't really see the markets having any crazy huge move just yet. I still think we're we're seeing money flow into stocks. They're actually getting some pretty good traction here, especially the tech sector. Uh, you know, I'd still be long this market. We are long. But when it does roll over, you definitely, I don't think, want to be holding that because things could get pretty ugly. And we could see that big debt problem like explode and we see another kind of financial reset in the markets and mm -hmm. we're, we're setting up for a scenario very similar to 2008 uh, which was a considered a uh, stage four decline which is a very big dramatic financial reset uh, so was the tech bubble that was a stage four decline those are the last two that we've had and this i think is going to be the third one and a lot of right. people don't realize how severe these are because uh, in 2008, 2009, just in that one year window, there was over 6,500 suicides direct, directly related from falling equity prices. Wow. So when I, I always refer to these, these deadly bear markets, uh, I always call them deadly because they are deadly. They ruin people's lives. They ruin retirements. They cause people to, to do extreme things. And that's why I'm trying to tell everybody as possible, like be prepared, whether it happens or not, if you're not prepared and it does, it is a pretty serious thing. And uh, I don't know what the major cause will be of it. It'll be the debt ceiling or just kind of the momentum from COVID and all that right. stuff coming to an end. Uh, who knows? But um, I do think we are going to go into a big crisis and it's going to happen, I think, start to happen before this year ends. Absolutely. Like you nailed it six months ago when you came on to our show and you said in 2023, we're going to see some downward selling in the stock market. Boom, it happened. And a lot of people now are saying, that uh, you know the Fed is absolutely trapped. They, they they've trapped themselves. It's a it's a trap of their own making. What do you see happening with gold and silver, Chris? Through all the chaos in the market, what what happens to gold and silver in 2023? Yeah, well, uh, gold and silver have been kind of the market. They were the market leaders really for up up till about a month ago. Yeah, uh, they were doing very well. Uh, we kind of talked about that six months ago. How I think the bottom was put in for precious metals. They're going to mm -hmm. lead the way. They have. They've been huge movers. Uh, but they have sold off in the last month and a half, and they're they're down pretty dramatically. Uh, I do think that precious metals, if we go into a big major debt problem and a, a financial reset, they're going to get pulled down with it. I mean, it's it's unfortunate, but the scenario is when selling and forced liquidation hits the markets, everything just kind of gets pulled down. When people panic, they sell right. pretty much everything, and uh, and sometimes they don't even want to sell it, but they're they're forced through through margin calls. So I do think, um, you know, gold and silver, they might have another rally. They might still pull uh, pull out an, a nice gain over the next couple of months. They, they've definitely fallen out of favor, but they are still seen as a defensive play. When the stock market falls out of favor, we actually see um, uh, precious metals and miners rally in a very big way. In fact, I mm -hmm. think I actually have a chart up here. If I was to uh, share my screen, I could show you a real uh, quick visual of that. Um, if I pull up, let me just pull up gold miners. And now these, are the, take these are the gold look, miners you're show, showing us, right? This is a GDX gold miners. Okay. 
Yeah. So if we take a look at this chart, there's there's this color coding along the bottom and this color coding when it's green means the stock market is favorable. You want to own stocks mm -hmm. when it's red. You do not want to own stocks. And so this is where gold miners have come out leading the charge. When the stock market was giving us this red market this time saying, hey, don't be holding stocks. They are actually in a negative trend. They look like they're going to go lower. Gold miners actually rallied. They mm. became that defensive play. And then the stock market gave us a buy signal. The stock market was, was doing all right. And then gold miners fell out of favor because people piled into stocks. And then the stock market, again, out of favor. Gold miners put in this huge rally in this double top over the past uh, couple of months. And then the stock market gave us another buy signal and gold miners have, have dropped dramatically. This is the same with silver miners, silver and gold. And so this is the disconnect right now is when the stock market's favorable, gold miners are going down. Mm -hmm. When it's uh, not favorable, people are piling into precious metals because they see it as a defensive safe haven play. And this is what happens uh, when we take a look at the actual market cycles. Mm -hmm. If we were to look at the market cycles, Precious metals are one of the last sectors before the stock market puts in a top. And so the fact that they keep acting as a defensive play when stocks are out of favor, energy did this last year. They were the leaders. Now it's precious metals. Interesting. I mean, we're on the uh, very close here to the markets having a big rollover, a big sell-off. And when I was talking about a stage three topping phase, this is the stage that we're in. I think right now we're in this complacency move. People think 2022, a lot of people think, that was the bear market. It's over. They right. don't realize we're going into a stage four decline, which is a major financial reset, huge opportunity. I have it green here because we make a lot of money during a falling market. Mm -hmm. We also make a lot of money during big rallies, but a topping phase and a bottoming phase are very dangerous. So, so is that kind of where we are? So is that kind of where you see uh, gold and silver playing? It's, it could be a huge possibility that it can go lower as the stock market sells off. But a lot of people, Chris, are saying that uh, what if the Fed actually pause or pivot? That will be the catalyst that will take precious metals uh, a lot higher. Do you Are you in that same camp or no? I mean, yeah, there, there, there always could be a wild card. The Fed could right. pivot. And of course, that will trump things. And and then if the trends change, uh, when the, a new trend starts, that's the nice thing about technicals is we just hop on the trend. Right. If things are going down, we're trying to, we're either in cash or we're benefiting from falling prices. If a wild card comes and we see the market start to rip higher, we see metals go higher, then we can get long metals. That's the nice thing. It doesn't matter what the news is. We just follow price. If mm -hmm. it's going up, we're long. If it's going down, we're we're net short with some type of position. Uh, if it's choppy, we just stand aside. So I don't. It doesn't really matter what what happens. But what the nice thing is, if we do go into a stage four decline and the stock market has a big sell off, we have a big financial reset. Precious metal miners will most likely trade sideways or pull down. Right. Uh, but they're also the first uh, kind of asset class and sector to rally. They'll be the first ones to bottom. And then they're they're going to be like off to the moon. And we've been waiting for this for years. I mean, it, it, 2011, so, 2012 was the last major peak. Mm -hmm. I think this will be the next kind of major reset where we could see gold go to 2,700 very quickly, uh, silver back up to 50 and beyond. So we just have to wait for the market to give us a new major signal. So it's very interesting. On this chart, you're showing stage three. We're, we're kind of, you think we're at the topping cycle. As we decline and go into stage four, where you say you guys make the most money, where where do you put your money exactly? Uh, like, where do you play? Where does the technical traders play? Yeah, so when we, when we go into this free fall mode, uh, our strategy is to play an inverse ETF. So as the mm. stock market breaks down and gives us a sell signal, we will we will end up uh, owning an ETF that goes up in value while the stock market falls. Uh, if I was to show you a chart, uh, so the charts are color coded. When mm -hmm. they go green, this is the NASDAQ, the daily chart. You can see we had an entry signal. We hit our first target. We hit our second target on Friday. Uh, our protective stops move up. Uh, so if we were to zoom out on this chart and go look at you know 2022, uh, the color coding chart, once we get into a full on stage four bear market, when the market goes from uh, green to red, we would be buying an inverse ETF, profiting from these declines wow. and then reset and profit from the decline. So we color code the chart based on technicals, based on uh, just price action and sentiment. There's a few different things that several things that play in there, but uh, we just follow price. And that's a nice thing. I don't really care about the news. I don't care what <laughs> happens. I do care, but I don't care in terms of 
uh, it doesn't affect my trading. Right. I don't care if there's news around the corner. If I'm in a position, I stay in that position because the charts are saying, hey, we're still in that trend. And until it's proven wrong, don't get out of that trend. Right. And uh, you don't want to use emotions to be trading, of course. You don't want to just look at the news and then start trading and then look at the news. That's that's probably the worst way to grow. go, right, Chris? It, it is. I actually wrote an article about it. So have you ever heard of the Myers-Briggs personality test? No, what is that? So there's 16 personalities. You're going to have to go check it out, find out what your personality type is. But there's 16 <laughs> personalities. 13 of them do not favor people uh, managing and trading their own money. They they fall victim to emotions and it, it controls them. And that's about wow. 81% of, of the personality types. And I also found a research report that shows that about 81% of individuals go broke in retirement, which I thought was amazing that wow. both of them coincide <laughs> together. And so if you don't know your personality type, you don't know what type of help you need in order to be a really successful investor. It doesn't matter if you've got the worst personality type in terms of managing money, but if you hire a service, somebody that can provide signals or auto trade it for you and you get on the right side of things, you know, you can do exceptionally well no matter your personality type. But people don't realize they're fighting with an like an invisible version of themselves or emotions wow. that's actually crushing their trading and investing. So it's really important to know what your personality type is. Do you need help? What level of help? Do you just need signals or do you need it done for you and make sure you're you're using a strategy that can profit from, you know, more or less all market conditions up or down? Absolutely. And does the technical traders like do you guys help with that? Like let's say I want to come in and say, "Hey, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm I I'm just just, you know, do, do you guys help with that? How do you guys help?" We do. So these are these are my signals. It's our it's I, the strategy I call CGS, which is the consistent growth strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, I use a, I use a, an investing method called asset revesting. I actually just published a book. It's a it's a, a bestseller on Amazon. You can see it probably wow. over my, my shoulder here. Um, but it's on a strategy where we follow the technicals. We don't hold assets falling in value. As soon as it loses its momentum, technicals erode. We step aside and we look for a different asset class that can go up while the market. Uh, retreat. So technical traders, we provide the signals so you can follow the alerts that that I trade. I trade all these with my own money. I, I built the strategy for myself wow. uh, and now I just share it with others. And if you really don't want to manage your money or you, you've never done it, we also have auto trading and we don't charge anything for it. It automatically executes these trades in your accounts, manages the position. So wow. you can really go from any level of, of from active trader yourself to just being like hands-free, like set it and forget it. And uh, you just get my updates so you know what's going on. You know when we've hit targets and and all that stuff. So we provide everything, um, you know, the beginner investor or the most active investor who who wants just a little extra help to get around the emotional game. And that's where our service actually comes in a lot. We've got a, a community. Uh, you can have uh, live comments in the members area. Oh, wow. And so it's always putting out fires. People get all worked up about the Fed coming. <laughs> Should we close positions? I'm getting out. And, you know, they all get all worried. I'm like, guys. Yeah. Just let the markets work themselves out. <laughs> oh, we get awesome. into the trends. We manage the positions. The rest doesn't matter. We can't control or guess the future. We just have to manage positions, right? Well, so. well said. And we'll pop up your uh, book on the screen right now. It's on Amazon. What's the book called exactly? It's called Asset Revesting. So Asset it's, revesting. it's yeah, it's totally different than investing. Investing, you know, I like to think of like investing as you just set your money to like kind of sit there and do nothing and ride that roller coaster out. Right. You invest for life. Uh, asset revesting is about looking through the markets, looking at the markets through a uh, hierarchy. What are the best assets to be in at any given time and only being in those when they're favorable? And um, yeah, it's like all that. about reinvesting your capital in the best asset. And if there is no asset that's favorable, we sit in cash. And we're in cash quite often, which is a pretty good feeling when uh, there's chaotic uh, moves in the markets. Absolutely. Well, Chris, yeah, you have no idea how much uh, of a pleasure it is having you come down to uh, Wall Street Silver. It's a, it's always great having you come down to talk about gold and silver because six months ago you were spot on. So hopefully uh, we can have you back on in the next three, four months and then get your uh, take on the market. Sure. Thanks, Ivan. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Huge pleasure. Talk to you soon, Chris. All right. Take care.